If this channel had existed around 2012 to 2013, I definitely would have made a video titled Is Dylan Kwasniewski the Real Deal? Kwasniewski is a guy who I thought would have been a superstar in the Cup Series by now, and maybe even a champion. But as you're about to find out, the Kwasniewski hype train was soon stopped after it started. So let's get into it. Kwasniewski began his career driving in go-karts at just the age of four, and later raced in bandoleros and legends cars before joining the ASA Super Truck Series in 2009. The energy drink Monster would sign on as a sponsor for his ASA truck that same year. Unfortunately, the following year, his life would change forever. His father, Randy Kwasniewski, who had been backing and supporting his son's racing career up to this point, committed suicide. No matter how it happens, losing a family member is extremely tough, and although he's never gonna fully get over this, I hope today he has found some peace. Although he was going through this painful loss, Dylan Kwasniewski still wanted to race and accomplish the dream of racing in NASCAR that him and his father had set out to do. In 2011, Kwasniewski entered the K&N Pro West Series driving for Gene Price Motorsports. He was able to attract another sponsor in Royal Purple, and soon after, he showed off his superstar potential. In his rookie season in the K&N Pro West Series, he scored two wins, eight top fives, nine top tens, and an average finish of 10.8, and would finish fifth in the standings. Kwasniewski capitalized on his rookie season in the best way possible, winning the 2012 K&N West Series Championship. His championship stats are this, three wins, 12 top fives, 15 top tens, and an average finish of 3.8. Kwasniewski wanted to compete for the K&N East Series title in 2013, and in 2012 Kwasniewski had announced talks with Joe Gibbs Racing to fill the car in the K&N East Series, but eventually he opted to join with Turner Scott Motorsports driving the number 98. Up to this point, no driver had ever conquered the East and the West, but Kwasniewski did the unthinkable. He would go on to win the 2013 K&N East Series Championship, beating out Brett Moffitt and Daniel Suarez. His 2013 championship sets are this. Six wins, eight top fives, ten top tens, with an average finish of 7.7. .7. With the East and the West now conquered, the hype reached a new level when he announced in 2014 he was going to drive full-time in the Nationwide Series for Turner Scott Motorsports. To fuel the hype even more, it was announced later on that season that Kwasniewski had signed with Chip Ganassi Racing as a development driver. Up to this point, nothing had stopped Dylan Kwasniewski, and the thought was that in the Nationwide Series, he was going to dominate there, win a championship, and then eventually become a superstar in the Cup Series. Those thoughts were solidified even further after Kwasniewski went on to win the pole in his debut Nationwide Series start at Daytona. But as you're about to see, none of what I just said came close to happening. The driver who had been climbing up the ladder through motorsports and succeeding his whole life would fall off a cliff in just one season. One of three Las Vegas natives in the field, young 18-year-old Dylan Kwasniewski, a rock star to be in the future of this sport, pun intended. Trouble! Kwasniewski! Caution is out. Hold it straight. Two more coming and turn down pit road. Turn down. He's getting some pressure from behind, and it looks like the 31 came up in front of him a little bit. Yeah, just trying to get back in line there. Not sure that he knew that uh, 60 car was coming as quickly as it was. So really not of a wreck of his own making, so to speak. Kuzneski had a tough day on Thursday, learning Darlington. Got into the wall twice, then the team had an engine problem on the 31 car. He learned, though. I tell you, I went down and talked to his crew. He said he got in the wall. Oh! oh! That was a classic mistake. They got arrow loose going at the oh, corner. Inside, hold you on. Coming back at you. They're not done yet. Mm. That could have been avoided. Well, that turned into 31 a 31 cleaned us out, getting into one. I'll say, I guess you saw it. I mean, that's Kwasniewski, really. He just put himself and Chris Buescher in a bad spot. Yeah, he just went in there, and he and this and continued. That, I don't here, think that was necessary right there. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know why he did that. Looked like Dylan clipped the bottom of the racetrack and then got up against car, then did what I call the classic arrow loose, where you just lose it and spin around. About 10 laps ago, you had your first damage into the wall. Take me through what happened there and then what eventually resulted in you ending up here. Yeah, uh, the first time we got uh, moved up into the wall by the 99. I don't know why he drove us in there. And then, uh, you know, we got damage from that. 
But uh, yeah, I got flat out dumped. Uh, don't know what else to say. I mean, the 16 just put us in the wall and, and uh, turned us back around. It's a shame. I knew we had a good piece. Uh, Turner Scott Motorsports did a great job of giving us a great car. Um, it's a shame that we get dumped like that, but uh, no respect for the driver. I mean, that's just what he, what he drives like. In the 31. Fired up. Get him fired up. Yeah, Kwasniewski, he got yep. a big part of that car. The whole front end's knocked off that car. with trouble. This has a tire rub on that left side. Right, what do you want to do here? Almost like a track bar. So yep. Yeah. And you know, that's kind of funny. I had a talk with this team. Now, we'll give you here, but not, we'll I talked to this team about just how hard off the pace here. this track is on suspension components. And they've had problems before with track bar oh, sir, at this race bar. Kwasniewski was running in 14th, a lap off the pace when this happened, and it's been that kind of a weekend for him. It just hasn't gone well for Dylan. Inching toward that it's minimum speed that NASCAR requires for him, and they're going to bring him to pit road. That's it. It's a track car. That's exactly what it looks like. So Kwasniewski, who had a brilliant start to the year with a pole at Daytona, He's had some rough rides, actually bounced back very well last week, recovered to finish in 13th position after smacking the wall and having a problem on pit road. They'll take, they'll attend to the 31 car now. Well, you see Kosneski gets loose and gets into his door, gets him out of the groove. I was talking about he avoided making a bad situation. He's the one that was creating the situation, but very fortunate. 6th to 26th today are for Brian Scott because of that. But yet, the race car is in one piece, and he's got a chance to regroup here under the caution flag. And we saw this right at the start of the race where he almost created a situation, but there's things that you, that you have to learn. You see Kyle Busch just sneaking through there. It's very similar to what we saw Paul Menard, Joey Logano kind of get in that situation, and this is what they avoided somehow. Yeah. And we saw Kwasniewski with the two car, uh, the very first lap of the race down in turns three and four. And it's a young driver. These are just things that you have to figure out that you've got to have all of that air. You get down and try to, try to stay wide open in there the way that you've been driving, and you just don't have the downforce that you have. We just taken out. Well, Dylan Kwasniewski, who just came off pit road, a lap or so ago after a green flag stop. That's turn one. And he's back clear, on the going. Nothing else. He was in 19th place. So Regan Smith, seven. Kwasniewski, 31. Kyle Larson, 42. That was one of a doubleheader. Hey, he may have opened that door up just a little too wide for the seven car to stick his nose in there. Regan Smith and Dylan Kwasniewski having words after the race. I'm sure not all of them are pleasant ones. And Vince has both sides of the story. Frustrating day for Regan Smith for sure. Some issues on pit lane and then uh, saw your conversation with uh, Dylan Kwasniewski there. What was that about? I, it was nothing. We're fine. You know, I, I had two runs on him and second time I just didn't give it wasn't a point in the race to give and, and I explained that to him and he said he wasn't going to wreck me he was just trying to show he was mad so it uh, you know, sometimes you got to be around a little bit longer before you start doing that stuff. Kyle Larson had his hands Whoa. Oh. into the wall and around. Oh. oh and Dylan Kwasniewski Lock collected. It down, Lock it down. Lock it down. His 2014 stats are this. Zero wins, zero top fives, three top tens, and an average finish of 17.7, and finished the dismal 11th in the standings. Soon after, he was released from Turner Scott Motorsports and Chip Ganassi's development program. 
The following season, he would make some select starts with Obiker Racing, where it didn't get any better. In six starts, his average finish was 29.2 along with two DNFs. At just the age of 24, it looks like Dylan Kwasniewski's NASCAR career is officially over. Today, Dylan Kwasniewski no longer drives race cars for a living, but is making an honest living another way, as he is currently working in real estate. I wish him nothing but the best in his future endeavors in his new profession, but in the case of NASCAR, he is without a doubt one of the biggest busts in recent history. Not just because of his on-track performance, but also by comparison. What I mean by that is he was a part of the NASCAR Next Class of 2012, which consisted of six current Cup Series drivers. Kwasniewski was looked at as the one who could lead the charge, but instead, he was the first one out. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.